In this video, we're going to talk about cooling fans. Okay, so let's take a look at my issue. Um, it's a, this seems to be a common problem that with these plastic fans that the blades of them start to curl out over time. Now when I fitted this fan, it wasn't brand new, but it was in what I assumed was a reasonable condition, but this is something that I've overlooked. So the actual blades, for them to be straight, they should be like that. Uh, and then of course, once they're bent in that position, they're inside the cowl and then the cooling would be more efficient. So what I'm gonna do is replace this fan with a brand new one. Now I've got a selection of um, used parts on this workbench here. Uh, I've got a few fans just to sort of show you some examples. So this is what I believe would be the original fan. It's like a, it's a metal fan. Uh, it's a lot heavier than the plastic fans. So that's why I believe the plastic fans are more popular because they push a good amount of air through and they're lighter. Um, apparently the metal fans do make the engine run a bit noisier. So I'll still hang on to this original metal one, but I won't be using that. Uh, this again is an old plastic one. This is an original Mowog fan. You can see that written on there. Uh, again, this one here, you can sort of see that the blades are curved outwards. If I put a ruler on there, I don't know. Uh, because just in the camera, you might not be able to see the actual curvature. But if I put a ruler flat on there, uh, you'd expect that the blades should be flat with the ruler, but maybe on that angle you can sort of see that one sort of shows the curvature in that blade, so it should be sort of like that, but it's like that. And then of course um, that causes the cooling to be not as effective, so air would be coming out the side rather than going through the radiator. Okay, the other thing as well I want to talk about are spacers. Um, I, I don't believe I've actually fitted a spacer when I put my fan on. So that will be something that I will need to add on there. So that just brings it a little bit closer to the radiator. So there's two different sizes here. This one is a 4mm that uh, most minis should have. So 4mm, um, 3 sixteenths of an inch. This one here is much larger. That one is a, about 17 millimeter, so 11 sixteenths of an inch. I believe that one is fitted to the Leyland Clubman Minis. So the radiator is obviously further away from the engine. That's why the larger spacer is required. So I'll definitely be fitting one of these on um, to see the spacing. All right, the other parts I've got here are some pulleys. This one here's actually got two uh, slots on it. I believe that's for a Leyland Mini that actually has another um, compressor for the emission system. I believe that's what that's from. Uh, that's the same sort of um, pulley that I have on there at the moment. So just with the single belt. And the way that slides on, that goes onto the water pump first then you should put the spacer and then the fan goes on next. So what I might actually do is just take some measurements of the distance between the fan and my current radiator. Alright, so what I want to do is just measure um, how far or how close that fan is to the actual radiator core. Let's try and get a ruler in here. So the end of the ruler is touching the core and I'm just going to measure the distance to the front edge of the fan and then I'll show you on the bench what part I actually measured. Uh, it looks like it's about 20, 24 millimeters. Okay so just to explain that so that edge there, or this edge here of the fan, if I just put the ruler there, about 24 millimeters. So that's the distance from the radiator core, that part there, to the actual edge of the fan here. So if I were to use that large Leyland Clubland spacer, I'd be cutting it fine with only like a four or five mil gap. 
So definitely don't want to use that one. Uh, this smaller one, the 4mm one, bringing it a little bit closer, 4 mils closer, it might help with the cooling. And if that's what it's meant to have, that's what I'm going to put on there. Alright, so I'll get started shortly. Um, so the first thing I'll need to do is remove the front grille and then drain the radiator. Um, the other thing I want to have a quick talk about is the temperature. So this Mini, it seems to run okay, um, even on a, a hot day. You now I've sort of written down some temperatures here. So when it's 25 degrees Celsius, um, that's 77 Fahrenheit. Temperature gauge is sort of on the normal and no issues there. Uh, when the weather is a little bit warmer, so we're looking at our maybe 30 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. So in Fahrenheit, that's 86 degrees to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when the, the needle sort of goes above normal. Um, I've measured like the actual temperature of these uh, or around the piston chambers um, with a laser heat gun to get the temperature and the temperature it does get a little bit higher but it's not to the point where um, it's overheating and ejecting coolant so it, it doesn't get to that point um, the temperature is sort of like 89 90 degrees and it's hottest um, I haven't really driven it on a really hot day and in Australia a hot day is like 42 degrees Celsius um, that's 107 degrees Fahrenheit so um, we're in the summer now so January and that's why I just want to change that cooling pan to see if there is any difference when I'm driving on days where the temperature is above 30 degrees Celsius. Um, usually the temperature gauge, once you're driving, it drops back to normal, but when you're sitting still idling, that's when the temperature sort of gauge increases. All right, let's get started on this. The next step now is to undo the lower radiator hose. So it's a flat head, I oh, don't know how you can see it down there. Undo the flat head screw and then we can remove that bottom hose. Okay, so let's get this um, put back together. That's um, that's the new fan. That's a mini spares. Um, it's meant to be a genuine one, but there's no. Uh, yeah, there is. There's a bit of writing in there. Uh, Rearsby. I think the other Mowog one I had said that too. Uh, it says Mowog on here, and engine side. Because um, I think um, the YouTube community is getting a lot better now. Um, people have been installing these the correct way now so obviously the the side that looks nice goes towards the engine all right so first of all I need to get the spacer on and I just need to make sure that this pulley is still lined up with the holes on the water pump and it has it hasn't really moved that much anyway okay so on the fan I'll just put the bolt through first uh, and then hold the spacer underneath and that's got to get into the um, just one of the first holes
Okay, so now I'll just do the opposite side. And then the last two. Okay, now I can tighten those up. Okay, the next thing I did is um, tighten up the alternator, get that fan belt tensioned. So they're nice and tight now. Next step is to actually get the radiator back in. Okay, so I didn't mention already when I took it off, um, leave these bolts done up and then just undo these bottom ones which connect to the um, the engine mounting bracket it's easier to get them two out than it is to these two because there is a hole um, just where the wheel is you can get a spanner in there or your hand and a spanner That bit was a struggle to get that bottom cowl back in. The way I did that, put the radiator in first, loosen up the belt so the fan can spin, and then feed this bottom cowl through here, uh, and then sort of turn the fan to sort of help it get through to position. Because what the issue is, is this bottom cowl needs to sit on top of the bottom radiator outlet, and this, it's just fiddly to get in because of that. All right, next job now will be to put the bolts onto this cowl um, and then tighten, put the bolts into the um, bracket, the bottom of the cowl that go onto the engine mount bracket. All right, this is a struggle. So I've got those, um, the two lower bolts in that hold the radiator cowl to the engine mounting bracket. They're just hand screwed in for now. Uh, and it's a bit of a clearance issue, but it might just be because everything's not in position yet. So the next thing I need to do is get the top um, cowl on, but I might actually get the bottom radiator hose, push that on while there's a bit more room. Okay, so um, I'll let you have a sleep for a bit and I'll put you on recharge while, because the battery and the camera went flat. Um, I've progressed a little bit, so I've got pretty much everything back together how it should go now. Uh, I had this, um, the, the fan belt loosened up just to make sure that I could rotate the fan just to make sure it's not scraping the cowl or anything, so that, that all clears it and that's nice. Um, I've retensioned the fan belt again. Um, I just need to fix up that overflow hose. Uh, there is a little clip it's meant to have in there, um, so I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, I'll just have it loose, or um, I think I had a cable tie down there to hold the other end in. So I'll sort that out, and then I've tightened up the drain plug, um, done up that clamp, the lower hose as well, and then I just need to re refill it. So let's um the main thing that we want to check out now is can you see how these blades fit all nicely within the cowl now? So that's what I wanted to achieve. Uh, whether or not that's even going to make a difference to the, the cooling efficiency, I, I, it must do because um everyone says, or the the resellers that sell mini parts say that if your fan blades are bent, you need to replace it. So that looks so much better now um, I just I wish that when I actually built the car put it back together um, 
so like just to save a few bucks I did use the old fan I'll just show you the old one uh, because I'm not an expert on these sort of things and then putting it together I go oh yeah here's a nice fan I'll just use that but you can sort of see just how bent those um, blades are so I don't think it was that effective so we've got the nice new one on there now so I just need to top up the coolant I'll get that done now Okay, that's close to what I actually took out. Oh, I did lose a bit of coolant on the floor. So what I need to do is run it, get it up to temperature, top up that coolant, and then check it um, as well, just to see how it goes. Okay, so I drove it for a bit. Um, I just need to uh, check the fluid next time. So let it cool down, check the fluid, top it up a little bit more, and then just keep checking on that for the next few runs and see how it goes. Well, hopefully in this video you've been able to see how to actually change it. It's an absolute pain getting that radiator in and, out, in and out. But anyway, it's done now. That fan works nicely. It doesn't rub it. Um, I, I was worried that I'll turn it on and all the, the blades will just shatter and come off. But no, it's all working well now. A lot of air blows through. I've just got to do more tests on a warmer day and just see whether it makes any difference to the temperature or not. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching my videos.